for the sake of conquering, not taking over a piece of land, not ruling over people by our sword. We always ruled by our thinking. We always ruled by our very visionary mind. That is why the topic the institution has given me to talk today is about India's role as a Vishwa Guru. Vishwa Guru is a very different world. It's a different word. Nobody can just use it lightly. Vishwa Guru means a person who throws light, a person who leads, a person who can be called as a Guru of all Guru. So rightly so, India is slowly and steadily getting back our moral power, the moral superiority which India always enjoyed over long points of time. The soul which was always intact in this Bharat land, slowly and steadily we are discovering that particular word called Vishwaguru. So it is only fitting the Honorable Minister has come in and India's success as a country in the last eight years in our foreign policy is a clear testament, is an able testament, is a convincing testament to the fact India is slowly and steadily emerging back to its old system and old roots. Friends, if you look at the record at history, what India hasn't contributed, what our nation hasn't done, we have done so much. As an engineering student, when you sit down in this hall, when you look at your very complex equations, when you try and solve it in your engineering mathematics 1, engineering mathematics 2, we all know the basic concept of zero, which is there in your mathematical book, which we all have studied, was given by Aryabhatta. Not only zero was given, once zero was given, the whole concept of mathematics changed. You need not invent many numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You need not invent some other number again. Once zero came in, you shortened the whole numerals to just nine number plus a zero. This was an outstanding invention which changed the whole concept of trading, counting, the whole concept of mathematics, which was given by Aryabhatta. The Arabs who came here as horse traders to buy horses, when they came back, went back to their original countries, especially the Middle East countries from which they came, they took back our numbers, the concept of one, the concept of two, the concept of three, all those numbers were created by us. When they took back the numbers to Arab land, they called the numbers as Hindu numbers, Hindu numbers, because at that point of time, India, after the Indus River, whichever part is after Indus River was called as Hind, which was later called as Hind. So they, they started calling that as a Hind numbers. When that numbers from Arab world started going to Europe and America later, then the same number was called as Arabic numerals, which you call 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 as Arabic numerals, also went from India. The very, very complex equations that you try and solve now, especially the indeterminate equations, the Chakravala method, which is a cyclic algorithm. Once the Chakravala method, the Vedic mathematicians of India invented, you are able to solve the complex mathematical problems. Once you are able to solve complex mathematical problem, you are able to measure a distance from point A to point B, measure the distance between sun to moon, here to there, and especially in a, in, a, in a globe, you are able to measure a distance between two different points. That changed the concept of astronomy, that changed the concept of navigation, that changed the concept of ship sailing. Again, that came from this land, the Vedic mathematics. If you go one step further and see what our country has contributed many, many years back, when John Dalton proposed the concept of atom, which we all have studied in physics, proton, neutron, electron, when, he, when John Dalton proposed, a century before, a century before, the great saint Kanet developed the concept of Anu, developed the concept of atom, developed the concept of motion in a deepest particle. That is a century before John Dalton, we have given that. That was also given by this great, great, great soul called the spiritual soul in this great Bharat land. When the whole world was thinking, earth is stationary and all the planets were moving around earth. And based on it, millions of inventions happened, millions of great things have happened. Then a great man, again from India, called Aryabhatta, he proposed the first heliocentric theory. He said, look, the sun is stationary and everything is moving around the sun. Once the theory was proposed, validated and accepted, what the world was thinking for about 2000 odd years, it has to change its mind. Because till then all calculations were with the basic assumption, the earth is stationary and everything is moving around. That was also given by India. Again, if you get into the medicine field, the susruta, the concept of medicine, the concept of plastic surgery, the first cataract surgery happened here. Again, the concept of Ayurveda, the concept of open surgery, whichever field you look at it, we had a very distinct stamp there. But unfortunately, what has happened? 
600 years we were not controlling the narrative during the Mughals period. Then two or 350 odd years in the East India Company period, we were not controlling the narrative. So 700, 800 odd years, when textbooks were written, you were not part of it. When the Gutenberg printing press came in Europe, first time they started printing books. It was not printed with an Indian history. Somebody else printed with their history. The Hindu numerals were called as Arabic numerals in the printing press that was printed in Europe. So we have lost that kind of a small power, a large kind of vacuum we have done it. Now post-independence from 1947, all of you are seeing, including me, India's foreign policy, how the world countries are treating India. We were living at a time after 1947, we were so confused, which economic model to follow? A country, a great country called Bharat, which was standing as a world beacon to everybody in terms of our putting family at the center of our economic model, in terms of putting agriculture as the fulcrum of our economy. When such a great country, after 1947, we were struggling which economic model to follow. Is it the Russian model of five-year plan? Is it the American model of an open country? When we are struggling for 40, 50, 60 odd years, 1991, we were forced to open up our country and post that liberalization, globalization. I remember when I studied engineering in Coimbatore from 2002 to 2007, out of uh, 60 of my batchmates, 49 are not in India now. They are in US, they are in Europe, they are in some part of the world. Because it was very fascinating at that point of time, because India never had an opportunity. And everybody were looking at a MS in US, they were looking at a MTech there, or probably an MBA in a European country. And nothing wrong in it, because they felt it is good for their career, they all settled. But if you look at the batch of Krishna, maybe two years, three years from now, when you graduate from the school, I can confidently say, 70-80% of you will be going to stay back in India. You would be doing something, you will be studying a master somewhere in India. Probably in a Delhi, probably in a Chennai or a Bangalore or a Hyderabad. Because the world is changing, the fulcrum is shifting towards India. Some of the best, the finest universities, the reverse brain drain. People are sitting in the Silicon Valley, they are coming back. India has just achieved its 100th unicorn. Unicorn is, is a very important parameter now. For a youngster, when you look at a country, when you look at business as an opportunity, entrepreneurship as a goal, India has just hit its 100th unicorn. 100 companies, they have got a valuation of 1 billion or more, which is amazing. The last one year alone, 41 companies have entered into the unicorn territory, which is exactly amazing. If you look at the combined valuation of the 100 unicorns, it is $333 billion. $333 billion, 100 private companies, that is their valuation in India. Only other country which can compete with India in terms of unicorn is probably US now. No other country can compete. So unicorn is a metric because 10 years from now, many of these unicorns are going to be global conglomerates having 10,000 people or more, or 50,000 people or more, or even 1 lakh people or more. That is the kind of India in which you are entering. India is getting back its moral supremacy, probably the last world power. Uh, very, very importantly, we are doing it the Indian way. That is more important. We can do it in any other way, but we are getting back to our roots. We are doing it our Indian way. Especially when the minister is there, the honorable minister is going to expound many, many great things, what we have done in the last eight years, but still, as a citizen of this country, what we felt very, very proud is for the first time, the citizens of India, we feel safe. Previously, we never know when the next bomb blast will happen. Is it going to be Mumbai? Is it going to be Hyderabad? Is it going to be an external element who will infiltrate and put a bomb? When I was a police officer for nine years, that was the biggest worry for us. Will it be in Bangalore or will it be in some other major city? Now, because of our way of having a very matured and very aggressive foreign policy sometimes also, you are not seeing any bomb blast happening anywhere. No external element, be it China or be it Pakistan or be it anybody else. Probably this is the safest point in India's history you are, you are living. And if you go one step further, when the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson came to Delhi some time back, he made a statement. I am alive because of two things. One, the nurses from Kerala were there in the ICU in, which, in England where I was admitted for COVID. And the two doses of vaccine that was put to me to come out of COVID was manufactured in India. Just look at it. Two or 350 odd years, you have come to India, you have taken our heart and soul, you have killed many of our industries, you, 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 you have killed our agriculture, the artists and the handicraft and many things we have lost when East India Company was here. Now, a Prime Minister from that country coming to Delhi, standing in our soil, thanking Indians for saving his life and thanking Indian companies for generating that COVID vaccine because of us, which is alive. That is the level to which we have come. Not only have we vaccinated 200 doses in India, 
Vaccine Maitri, we have sent it vaccines across the world, Africa, America, Europe, every single place our vaccines have gone. So that is the kind of India we are living. I'm just a night watchman. My role is uh, just to warm up and, and deliver the stage to Murli Dharanji, the authentic person, the person who's in the middle of things in the last many, many years. Uh, to show India in a very new light, to show all our achievements to you. So I deem it as a privilege to come here, talk to you. Especially, I think we are very, very happy. Uh, it, 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 it is a great uh, thing to be a youngster in India now. That too, it's a great thing to be in college. It's the greatest thing to graduate from this college in about two years now and get into a new India, which is completely different, in which the opportunities are million. You can go and create anything you want. Uh, the people who are living, who are inside this hall now, I think each of you might have a dream. Somebody wants to be an actor, somebody wants to be a music person, somebody wants to be an entrepreneur, somebody wants to be a career technocrat. So this is an India where anything is possible. You can, you can invent, you can devise a role, a career for you, and the country is absolutely ready to make sure that all your dreams, uh, dreams get fructified. So I take the opportunity to again thank Madam Malarvili and uh, 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 Sri Aditya Ji and all the teachers and professors here it's a great country. It's a great time to be an Indian citizen. It is going to be an amazing time for you all in the next 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, it will be a privilege for you to be a part of this great country, to shape up this country, to build this country, to take it country to the next thing. So I am sure with you all, India will definitely be rightly called the world's wish for guru. Not only yoga, not only Ayurveda, be it the soft power, be it the millions of employment we are going to generate, so in which you will be playing a massive, massive role with this. I thank Krishna College of Engineering and Technology for giving me an opportunity to come and thank you. I wish you all success. Unganeverukum nalla oru valkai, arpudamana valkai, nirayvana oru valkai, sandoshamana oru valkai. Ningal enna seiyam endu mo, adi seivadar ka anda vanu ungalak ka anaiyithu vedamana vaipagalayu muruvaki kudu ka endu mandre. Ellam alla iravandan prathani seidi kundi endre. Nandri vanakam Bharat Mata kije. Thank you, sir, for those words of insight.